architect and uh, we are going to have a very good session today on KMM and, and simplified building a mobile app solution. So before we even get started with this model, so we, we, we like really have a hands-on session. I know this is, this is a developer community and uh, we are not trying to create any sort of a marketing materials here, rather we wanted to give some outcome as a part of our uh, today's event. So we have built a very interactive demos and the hands-on sessions and the objective is each and every one of our developers been in the call in this forum, wanted to experience the KMM's benefit and what are the values that the KMM is going to bring in for each and every one of you. I'm very sure this is going to be a very exciting show for you all. And I'm going to start with a very, very small story which is in line with what Kotlin multi-model is all about and uh, the presenter is all about. So that's a, that's a very, very small story to start with so that it is going to resonate and correlate. And also we're also going to have some sort of a use case also that we've put in and we're going to correlate the use case versus the technology both put together. If you have any questions in between, you can raise your hands and we'll have it, the session much a little bit more interactive than a one-way conversation. Okay, so the story of Eagle, uh, it's like a very small story, I'll summarize in uh, a minute. Uh, precisely talking, uh, Eagle uh, goes on top of the hills and whenever it's supposed to choose some uh, partner, it throws a very small stick from the, from, the, from the top of the hills. And whichever Eagle picks from the top, for the first, he or she chooses the mate. So that's how Eagle chooses the mate. And they hatch egg and uh, when they are building the nest, it will be three layers of nest. The first layer will be a thorn, second layer will be made up of hay, and the top layer will be made up of a cotton. And uh, egg hatches and once the baby eagle comes out of the uh, egg, um, <coughs> the bird tries to fly. The mom and dad allows them to, teaches them to go and fly. But, but since it's being for the first time, uh, the baby birds doesn't want it to fly. So the first they give a comfort zone of the cotton, Mommy bird takes the cotton, pulls it out. So the next is all about the hay. Uh, it's like a little bit of itching. So the baby bird tries to fly, but still it is hesitant to fly. Then, then, the, then the daddy bird takes out the hay also out of it. And finally it's left out with thorns. So the bird doesn't have any option other than to fly. So the moment when the baby bird fly, if it tries to fall down, the, the like daddy bird comes and catches the bird. So that's why the like initial pictures come into picture. And, and, the, and the eagle is comfortably able to fly. And once the eagle flies and it is like supposed to live for 40 years, I mean it's supposed to live for 70 years technically, but at the end of the 40 years, it takes up a decision of becoming weaker in terms of the claws gets weaker, the wings becomes heavier. So eagle has got two options. One is you have to go on top of the hills and fall down and die or you have to rejuvenate yourself. So what eagle does is that it just goes on top of the hills and breaks its beak. So it takes some time to heal and the beaks come out. Then using the beak, it, it like pinches out all of the feathers and take all the feathers out. So the bottom line message is all the feathers will also grow first, fresh. And using that, it also pull the nails and the nails also will grow. So eagle starts his new life at the age of 40 and try to live for another 30 more years. So what this story related to Kotlin multi-model is all about, like thinking very far ahead and rejuvenate themselves in terms of how the mobile app has been evolving over a, over a period of time. So self-disruption is something, uh, bottom line uh, message out of the story we all have to take. And, uh, starting from the beginning, Android was the like, pioneer from the beginning so far of all the mobile app developments. Then, then slowly Kotlin comes into picture and now the Kotlin multi-model is being taken over in terms of building a simple app first of all on a multiple set of platforms. That's why we are going to see it in the subsequent slides. Next please. Okay, so Kotlin multi-platform with mobile features combined together form as KMM. So what, is, what does this really meaning is all about? Can you go next please? For every typical mobile app development, you will have a native Android and native iOS, or you can go for a class platforms. So if I'm talking about a native Android and native iOS, precisely talking about all the native features like gyros access or accelerometers and sensors and all the things, all of those comprise of a native app experience. When it really comes to the class platform, Flutter and React native, a lot of people in the form will be using this. So using this platform, you have a single code base which can be deployed on either iOS or in the uh, Android uh, platforms. So this is the typical mobile app development being uh, practiced in the industry. Okay, so now I'm going to show a little bit more in detail of about what this KMM is, uh, going a little bit of more uh, details. If you talk about the UI centric under, under, under the core centric, I'm going to correlate this example with a very, very small example. Let's take a OTT based model. Okay, we all have experienced OTT and OTT becomes one of our integral, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a OTT which, which is like, in, which is like integral part of our life system right now. Let, let, me, let me take a very small uh, use case from OTT, which 
This is one of our customer as well, Sun TV. Sun Direct is one of the platform that we were trying to build it on Xamarin. So we, we actually build this platform using Xamarin for Sun Direct payments and uh, uh, plans and releases. That's how the, that's the use. Basically, we try to solve the SVOD problem statement from Sun Direct. So likewise, if you take up Sun Next, so Sun Next pretty much talks about building once and deploying it on multiple set of platforms, right? One can be on a TV, the same application has to go on mobile platform, the same has to go on any of your external peripherals also. So the problem that we were able to face during our development stages, not on the web or on the mobile, because the cross-platform helped us in building those, but when we're trying to build a similar app on the TV apps or on the extended peripherals like watches and things like that, that's when we are like about to start building a fresh development. So which, which like we from a solution side felt, okay, uh, our customer is paying double the cost, and we from a developer also felt like, okay, I'm going to rewrite the same code base that I've written already for the multiple platforms. So will there be any external solution that's going to solve me with having a single business logic code base where I should be able to duplicate, and the UI layer should be able to freshly depending upon other things. That, that's how the Kotlin multi-platform does it. If you take up any application, will have four layers. First is a views, which is like UI, and a presentation layer, domain layer, and a data core. These are the four layers for any typical application that you take from a core-centric to a UI-centric. So if you like consider React Native or a Flutter or a Xamarin forms, they all will solve all the thin clients problems from the front-end perspective, where you keep all your APIs in the heavy-lifted backend, all your business logic being done in the backend, and these front-end tools are going to just pull the data and show it up. Very simple. If you take a OTT's typical example, is on the playback. That is that, that's a typical challenge from any thing. There will be three challenges. First challenge I am seeing is, one is on the playback uh, calibration part, second is on the framework part, and third is on the content delivery and the content management part. So these are the three areas, like we call them as a content discovery. So content delivery and a content discovery. If I'm talking about a content discovery, the ability to search from a million apps in terms of converting into a single customizable personalized app is one, one use case, right? All these logic happens in the back end, and these front end tools are going to just show it up on your front end mobile or in the web applications. So if you like consider any thin applications or a simple apps or any MVP that are going to build in, React Native or a Flutter or a Xamarin is going to help. When it really comes to the complex apps or fat clients, especially when it has a very, very rich business logics being done, then comes about the core JavaScript core and the C++ wrappers are going to help us in terms of addressing those thick client problems. So then comes the Kotlin. So this is the actual problem statement that, that we have been seeing so far. And Kotlin is a solution is going to have all the business domain and the data core part will be handled by Kotlin from a multi-platform and a mobile perspective, where you build your all your business logic. For example, in the OTT perspective, all the contents, be it encryption, decryptions, closed captions, all can go in the part of the back-end uh, part of it, where we call them as a business and a domain. Whereas keeping all, you, 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 all you got to do is just build only the front-end layers, like be it build one on watch app, one on the mobile app, I mean one on the web app, and also on any of the external peripherals that you're trying to use it. So you build your front-end apps on your external systems, but you can reuse all the core and the business domains from the back-end perspective. That's, that is a core value we have seen as a benefit, and we have been experiencing Kotlin's beta for the past uh, few months, and we have seen a huge amount of benefits, at least I would say 20 to 28% of benefit from a development angle we are able to see in terms of reusing our existing code base and the business logics. And, but the front end has to be built in separately for their perspective. So this is one use case which I wanted to articulate. And we also built a similar health app also. Even if you talk about health related apps, right, like, a, like a Zumba kind of an apps, where you have a TV apps, you have a watch app, you'll have a mobile app. So these are some of the use cases which like, we have seen media based use cases are being an ideal proper candidate for Kotlin multimodal where without disturbing your native experience, you can build all of your mobile application. That's, that's a like single fundamental message out of this slide. Okay, so with this, we are going to go for a hands-on session in terms of how to build uh, the like front end and how to build the like back end logics. And I'm very sure at the end of the session, you'll be having a single takeaway of how to build app in KML. I'll give it to my colleague Ganesh. Thanks, Kubi, for the high-level introduction about uh, KMM. So I'm going to dig deep into how uh, KMM works and what are the benefits of uh, Kotlin multi-platform multi mobile. Okay, so uh, I, I have been uh, uh, around uh, 12 plus years of experience in mobile application development. I have built many, many mobile applications, especially in Android. Um, so how to, how to build a mobile application? So either it will be in the native way or in a cross platform. In a native, uh, Android evolves from Java to Kotlin in the recent, uh, recent years. Uh, Kotlin is... Uh, uh, compared to Java, Kotlin is a very good uh, programming language. It is uh, okay. It 
is a self explanatory uh, language that uh, helps the developer to build mobile applications uh, very easily so uh, whenever you write a code in kotlin and it is easily maintainable when compared to java so this is the uh, the recently uh, kotlin also uh, comes up with uh, jetpack compose library to build uh, ui and uh, uh, in, uh, in the same way ios also comes up with uh, swift, swift ui okay so here comes uh, kotlin multi platform go to the next slide uh, Okay, so what are the benefits of Kotlin multi-platform? So it's a, it's uh, it is not completely uh, uh, tighter to the Flutter or React Native. So uh, KMM KMM stands in a way like it the business logic, the core business logic stands in the shared uh, sh shared artifact, and uh, the UI part is uh, comes in the uh, native way. Okay, the shared testable co architecture is in the present in the uh, sh shared layer and. Uh, the UI can be developed in uh, specific to the uh, platform itself. Like uh, if you want to develop a mobile application for Android, the shared, uh, the UI can be developed in a Jetpack Compose or a Kotlin. And uh, if you want to develop a, a UI layer for uh, iOS, then you have to bring a Swift UI. Go to the next slide. OK, since uh, I don't know uh, how many of you are aware of uh, the KMM, uh, so KMM is now in beta, and uh, as, uh, very soon it's going to the production. Uh, as of now, there are only a few modules, few libraries which is available officially, like uh, coroutines, which is helps to do a background task, like async task, and a serialization, which helps to bring um, a network communication that JSON or XML serialization, and lint check is, is to validate uh, the, the multi-thread uh, uh, asynchronization uh, thing. And Ktor is for server communication and client communication. And other, there are other libraries also available, uh, like uh, Coin. Coin is for uh, uh, Kotlin um, uh, dependency injection. And Apollo and OKIO is, again, a network uh, library. Go to the next one. OK. So if you build a uh, Kotlin multi-platform application, the output of the uh, module is, for, uh, is a framework for iOS, and uh, uh, JAR is uh, for Android. So I'm going to start with some Hello World application first, then, then move on to the uh, uh, further comparison between Flutter and React Native. So I have this uh, KMM setup ready in my Android Studio. Uh, the first, the first thing, sorry. Okay. Okay. So in order to uh, build the KMM application, so you you can have this uh, KMM plugin installed in the Android Studio. So I already uh, done the setup. Uh, I'm going to start um, new application. So if you have already installed the KMM, you, you can see this uh, K uh, Kotlin multi-platform app uh, template is appears here. And then we can give a name, application name. So if you can see, this uh, Android app uh, uh, comes with the Android app as a module, and iOS app comes with the iOS app as a module, and there are shared uh, library also comes with uh, uh, this template. So I have already installed this uh, dependency manager and also it it's, uh, comes with the Coco, uh, Coco Boss dependency manager or you can choose a regular framework as well. Okay, so I'm choosing a Coco, Coco Boss dependency manager. So it is it's creating a project. Okay. So by default, Android Studio always uh, uh, selected this Android as a uh, project structure, but uh, you can go to this uh, project to see all the folders available. So you can see uh, there is Android app, there is iOS app, and there is sh shared folder. Okay. So okay, I didn't do anything. Just a template. I can able to run this application immediately. Okay. So this is a old application. I'm just putting here. So I. I run this application, which is uh, an Android emulator now. Okay, you can see Hello Android 32. Okay, um, so there is a code that is written in a shared folder, which is which tells what is the API level for the in the, in the present in the em emulator. I can choose iOS app now. I'm running the same code. Okay, here it comes. So Hello iOS 16. So which tells what the voice of the simulator. Okay, uh, I want you to. Uh, Go through this, um, the modules and folders. Okay, so here it is. So 
the the cartel multi platform helps to do uh, uh, two things the one is the common code that can be written in a shared folder or you can write a platform specific code which can be expected in from the common um, artifact okay so this is the application that demonstrate about how to how to write a code which is specific to platform okay i have written a, it, in java you can you can uh, say abstract method that is a abstract method whenever the class that inherits abstract abstract class that they need to override the, the method so i have this platform which is get platform get platform is a method which is specifically written in their own um, uh, directory okay uh, there is a android main here and it returns the platform from the android and here it returns platform from the ios so but i have this method declared here as a get platform in the shared in a shared folder i can call what is see i didn't i didn't uh, check whether the, if ios is equal to ios or if ios is ios and right so i'm just calling the method get platform that that calls a specific method which is related to the the device which the app is installed so that's how it is working so um, this is the simple um, uh, the application that demonstrate how this uh, uh, kmm works and uh, i'm i want to to um, i want to come uh, continue this uh, comparison um, in the next slide okay so play from current slide okay so i'm sitting here so okay okay so flutter and react native are the most most popular uh, cross platform um, development framework which is uh, used by the, uh, across uh, the globe the developer okay so uh, i'm i'm segregating this uh, the factor like ui so if you take ui and uh, the, the kmm you have to you have to write um, uh, the code separately for android and ios but still shared logics written in the uh, is common to both the, the platform but in the flutter it is common uh, there is a common code that can run in both ios and android uh, similarly for uh, react native in the react native the, the, the problem is you have to return a code in javascript that can be mapped to the native element okay so, so to overcome those things that in, in terms of uh, performance flutter um, uh, comes okay so business logic okay um, in dart uh, both the platform uh, share the common code and in react native uh, react native and flutter are almost in a uh, 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 same fashion okay in an kotlin multi platform platform also have the the business logic written in separately in a separate layer okay so uh, we we have come across many design patterns like mvc mvp mvvm and this is one kind of architecture that is design pattern which helps to segregate the business logic which is commonly for both platforms layered architecture yeah as i said this layer ar layered architecture plays a vital role that differentiate is a differentiator okay so compared to flutter and react native um if the in, from the introduction of the kotlin itself uh, 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 the kotlin claims the interoperability operability with java or, or any other language uh, actually kotlin replace, replaces everywhere where wherever the java is okay so it comes for android uh, we can use for android mobile application development it comes for it, we can use kotlin for uh, front end application development we can use uh, for server application development so kotlin itself claims it can replace java everywhere so the interoperability in from the introduction of kotlin itself it comes with interoperability but in case of flutter we need to stick with the dot dot language react native we need to stick with only js and one more thing is we can easily go to native uh, uh, as uh, as i mentioned the, the kmm is a layered architecture then we can uh, we can write shared common logic in the shared uh, uh, layer and uh, if if it's if it is something specifically need to be implemented in a native way then we have to we have to write we can easily go and write the code in a native uh, uh, with respect to the platform okay um the the other thing is um, integration with the existing project okay so you have the application which is uh, uh, written already already available in either ios and android you can easily start from start with the kmm and a step by step process okay so you can reuse the code whatever the whatever the code which is available in android you can reuse the code and build the common shared um, the core uh, business logic layer in the in the kmm itself and share uh, share across uh, between the platforms 
But in Flutter or React Native, uh, you need to believe, you need to have this own infrastructure uh, for the, the application development. So Kotlin uh, multi-platform mobile is a very good choice. Uh, so as I mentioned, um, if you have the existing native code which is already built, and uh, uh, if you want to, uh, if, you, if you have this, uh, uh, if you have this uh, the application uh, more uh, more depend on the native components. Uh, for example, if you want to connect with the Bluetooth or a sensor, accelerometer, gyroscope, or um, or any other any other hardware related stuffs, then you can go with uh, KMM. Also, uh, uh, when when Android chooses uh, Kotlin as official language, um, it claims that we you can go uh, incrementally into the Kotlin from Java to Kotlin. You can incrementally develop application to the Kotlin. So I, I have the application built in Java. I can write new activity or fragment in Kotlin that can interoperable with existing Java code itself. So that's the sa the same fashion. KMM also we can uh, brought into the mobile application that is uh, into the code. Flutter is not the case. Um, uh, and one more thing, um, Kotlin claims this uh, the coroutine, right? So the the thread. Okay, one one coroutine is equal to hundred thread. That, that's a that's a claim that uh, uh, from the Kotlin. So if, if it comes uh, uh, the multi-threaded uh, uh, application development, then KMM is a very good choice. Okay, so this is the application architecture. Uh, this is a uh, so ideal, ideal application architecture that uh, demonstrate how how the KMM is uh, um, structured. Okay, so I want to show in um, uh, code itself. Um, so this is the this is the component like uh, space SDK, uh, space API. You see, uh, as I mentioned, this the the networking or uh, caching or the offline database and uh, all the business logic that can that can be uh, done in a shared um, uh, the platform itself. So I'm going to switch it to uh, under studio um, to demonstrate other thing. Okay. So here I have this um, KMM map. Okay. So um, let us first introduce this uh, um, build out girdle. Okay. If I need to correlate what Ganesh is talking about from the view that I talked about the OTT platform. Uh, all the core business logic, right? Very precise. Talking about a closed caption, for example, that is a that's a that's a shared one. So those can go on to the KMM model. Only the front end portion can be designed for your watch or for your uh, TV or for your uh, a mobile or web platforms. So, uh, typically speaking, about all the caching stuff, all the local storage offlines, and uh, precisely talking about the closed captions or a playback where the pause and place and all the core business logic can go on to the shared, and the rest of UI can go on a front. So that's what the KMM's benefit is going to lie with. And also regarding the one more use case, we talk about the Zumba use case, even that also correlates to the same thing. If you look at the logic, what has to go on a shared, what has to go on a UI. So this, this makes a vital difference when you're architecting your mobile, mobile application, right? Both is going to solve your front-end problem. If you want to keep all your lightweighted stuff, like for example, the user privileges, all the role-based accesses, settings, logins, passwords, everything can be done via the front-end part. So that those are like lightweighted stuff. All the lightweight stuff can be go on your native. It, it can it can either be on Android native or it can be on iOS or like a Shift UI or like maybe on the like Shift as well. But when it really comes to the core logic or a functionality, where the like health health benefits or uh, the actual calculation of the uh, speedometer or the walking distance and all the calculation part can go on a shared model. So that's how we have to split between what has to share on a multiple platforms and what has to go on a front end part. So that that that, that is one of the best practices which we wanted to highlight. Even in case if you're trying to highlight or uh, architect your uh, mobile solutions, this this plays a very vital role in terms of choosing what stack or what platform that it, that it like, really goes to. When like we decided to go with Kotlin, there are a few reluctance from the developers also. This one uh, message still Ganesh loads. I want to share this use case. When we moved from Android to a cross platform, for example, Flutter or React, and there are a lot of reluctance from the developers community also, or even from their customer perspective as well. As well. So the point is, will I get a native experience? Or, or like, is it going to be hybrid? Or, or how am I going to get a, a realistic uh, native experience? Because everybody needs a native experience, right? From, from the both from user perspective, as well as from the developer's community perspective. We all wanted to have a native experience, and the native holds always a stronger preference. So during that stage, people are reluctant about going into cross-platform. Even when the KMM really comes into place, we are also seeing a lot of reluctance from the like, developer's community, as well as from the customer perspective as well, how this is going to be, how my acceptance is going to be working with. But eventually, that is. Uh, the solid use case lies with. But it naturally depends upon what is the problem statement you are trying to solve. Uh, 
not all the apps have to be built on KMM. Absolutely no. You got to pick and choose based upon the use case, especially if you have a media-based or entertainment-based scenarios where you have a TV apps, where you have a, a, a peripheral apps like a watch uh, or a TV or a mobile, web all put together, then KMM plays a very vital role. You will you'll be able to see the better ROI in terms of yeah, the development perspective as well as go to market perspective as well. Yes, Ganesh. Uh, this is the uh, typical project structure that I, I wanted to um, see. Okay, see, uh, there are plugins that we, we, can, we need to declare there. Uh, so this is a special plugin for offline database. Uh, for the mobile developers, they are familiar with uh, SQLite as a, uh, a database, and uh, Android developers uh, re recently using Room as a wrapper for SQLite. And here, uh, SQL, SQL uh, Delight comes for uh, KMM. And um, here, the, the, the dependencies, that we can, we, if, if you want to, uh, if you want to use uh, networking layer, then we need to, do, we need to um, uh, add the dependency here in the common main. So this is the first, this is the first thing that we need to do. Okay, in the common main, we need to declare all the dependencies which is required. That what are the, what are the business logic and uh, the functionality that we are going to implement in the shared. And similarly, so we need to write. We need to add a dependencies which is specific to Android main. So the, here, why why there is Android main and uh, iOS main is there? Okay, as as I uh, showcased you in the Hello World itself, uh, there are two things. The one, the one, the one code which is shared across the platform is uh, the first thing, and another one is we can write a platform specific code. Okay, so if if you want to Im implement, uh, uh, if you want to add features which is uh, specific to Android main, then we need to add a dependency here, and there are many other dependencies. Uh, for iOS, if it, it it leads to the architecture of the the particular device, either the iOS uh, the output of the iOS uh, module is a framework, the framework which fits for x x64 architecture and uh, ARM64 architecture. So it depends. So I have this uh, dependencies added here in uh, iOS main itself uh, uh, for now, and uh, here goes um, yeah. So this is the uh, shared thing. Okay, so the SQL Delight um, talks about the database. Okay, so, so this is a simple query. Okay, the query written in uh, uh, the words. Okay, so the insert launch tells it's it's an insert. Okay, the removal launches tells that um, uh, the SQL uh, the framework library as a delete. So when I compile this compile this. Uh, uh, app database.sq it generates a code uh, which 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 can be used from the, the application okay so i can show i can show you this uh, generated code here um, build generator sql delight okay app database so whatever the whatever the sql query that we have written on there uh, that creates a that generated the, the implementation for all the method, uh, whatever we have declared as annotation like uh, uh, keyword. Okay, so this is the auto-generated class by the SQLite, SQL, SQLite Delight uh, library for the KMO. Okay. So, so as I mentioned, okay, the, the offline cache and uh, the API, API connections are uh, brought into the shared library, which is shared between the both platforms. Here it comes the code. Um, common main, okay, Kotlin. So I have this um, entity, which is used for database, and I have this network layer, okay. That is a SDK. That is a SDK that that has both both layer. Either either it is offline, it comes for a database, and either, uh, or it is a API. Uh, that is a networking library. So this SDK. SDK is the topmost layer where the platform specific uh, uh, the code uh, connects with. Okay, SDK talk to the API and uh, returns a result um, uh, as part of this uh, offline cache. Okay, so so these are the these are the code uh, that can be called from the uh, the platform. Okay, I can run this code for a better understanding. Okay, so. I'm running this application iOS. Actually, it fetch uh, result from the internet itself. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about the connection strength. We were like initially thought of making a recorded session, but um, we wanted to give you a real live feeling. So that's the reason we wanted to connect and give you all a live experience. Yeah, the result come. Um, result are fetched from the API, 
and uh, stored in the database and displayed here in uh, uh, the presentation layer. Okay, so the whatever the code which is available in the iOS is here. The content view dot shift which has a uh, shift UI code. Okay, so there is a content view. There is a view model that observes the changes, whatever happen, whatever the uh, state changes happening in the SDK, and uh, it loads the launches. Uh, and it, it calls the get launch SDK dot get launches. Okay, so the SDK is responsible for getting the uh, data from API. So the load launches method is uh, getting called in the UI uh, content view dot shift. This, this is a code. This is um, called Swift UI, um, relatively equivalent for uh, Android Jetpack Compose. Okay, I'm running the same uh, in Android app. Okay, uh, I believe you can able to see see this uh, the both the data we are able to see in iOS and Android. Okay, the pre the presentation layer which is written here in uh, Kotlin and uh, in iOS it is written in Swift UI. So just want to conclude like um, so this is the um, okay KMM KMM will have this this layer. This SDK, API, offline database, and all these things present in the KMM. Okay, and um, okay, let's come to this. Uh, so this uh, this layer architecture is explained in a bit detailed way. Okay, there is a source common main set and uh, platform specific uh, also written in the shared layer, uh, Android main and iOS main, and then the output of this uh, the compilation of Android source code is jar, and uh, the outcome that the module uh, will be written as uh, the framework for uh, iOS the target. Uh, iOS platforms, and then this is similar. Okay, um, okay. So if you want to add uh, multiple architecture, then you have to bring uh, architecture specific source set, and, and then uh, the respective framework will get uh, built. Okay. So I believe uh, I already demonstrated. Uh, that's it, uh, Gopi. I hope you all enjoyed the session, and thank you.